kind of fun to be able to show you. Eric Carl would use a razor blade. He would he would actually draw his artwork onto transparency paper. He would lay that on top of his collage paper he made, and then he would cut it out with a razor blade, the transparency paper and the tissue paper. And now me, having done a lot of paper art, I can tell you that that is really hard to do without ripping things. Okay, so you would end up with, you know, little circles and things like that so that they could play with. Uh, <laughs> making confetti, yay, yes, yes, make confetti. I love to still do this on a tray so that they, you know, I would actually, now that I don't have a piece to show you, but, um, you know, let them just cut it all up and let it stay on the tray. And then when we're ready for the next piece, which is where you bring in some paper, hold on, let's see, we would pull these pieces off and we would put them on a, on a basket or my favorite is putting it in a shell. I don't know why, but if you were doing like Mr. Seahorse or something, one of his other oceany ones, it's kind of fun to incorporate your containers into kind of the feeling that he has in his in his uh, in his books. That's just my own preference. Okay, so you have just a piece of paper, regular piece of paper, and then you'd give your children either a bottle of glue or for my little ones, I like to put it in a jar with a paintbrush. This is just easy for them, and. For my older ones, they like to pre-draw things, right? And then they could cut it out and, and put it on. Or for the little ones, this, the process here is just putting this glue down on your paper. Oh my gosh, is that Deep Space Sparkle? You just, I think you just made my life. <laughs> you love my lessons, thank you. Oh my goodness. Okay, so we would just put this down here. And then I'm going to pull out the shell because I think it's fun. So these are all the little papers that they made, right? And they would then, they could create whatever they wanted with this and explore that of mixing these colors now, however they want. I'm just, and I, you know, <clears throat> I won't lie. I did one of these the other day and found it really fun, <laughs> really fun. <laughs> this has been a great glue tip. Uh, for little ones. It just makes it so much easier. I, I mean, I, I, was, I was very adamant for a long time, being like, no, no, it needs to be in a glue bottle. And, um, but you know what? I'm really about giving kids success in, um, in, in art, right? Like, I want them to feel successful. I don't, I don't want it to be like, it's okay to fail and it's okay to get frustrated. But when you're first learning, like when you're in preschool, it's like, no, you're, you just need to have this be successful. Uh, and that way, right? And that way then when you do enter something that's a little bit more challenging, you've got a really good base to, to work from. So I don't introduce now a glue bottle to my, my kids until they hit three. So my little, little ones, I, I'm like, we're all about this in this jar. Uh, but we start doing more, more of that squeezing stuff in a, I do a lot of these things. I guess these are condiment bottles. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Give kids success in art. I love it. A bumper sticker. I, that would be my bumper sticker. I'm like, let's give you success. I want you to succeed. It's fun. And you know, and, and art is, and we want people to feel like art's a safe place to be because it is. It's the best place for you to go and just explore ideas. There's no right or wrong, right? And it's just that whole idea of, um, uh, this is a, this is the first place that every kid should fail because you can't fail. <laughs> you can't fail in art. And so it's where you learn to make mistakes, right? And then, and then you, st but there's no mistakes. So you go, wait, I, that's not what I want. You go, but wait a minute, infinite ability to create here, turn it into something else. And so you start becoming a problem solver, right? And then you become somebody who can, can really actually be innovative and be creative and be a thinker. Okay, so I'm building this out. This is what my other, my little one built on tag board the other day with, this is the butcher paper. And so you can see it's not perfectly laid down or anything, but she's, this is the sky. We've got the ground. Um, I'm pretty sure she wants to build a caterpillar on top of this. I have no idea, but this is just to give you an idea of what this ends up looking like uh, potentially. It could also just be this. Right? They might be like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> but you've gone through it, you've given them the opportunities to explore it, and, and that's that's the main that's the main piece. And then we were inspired by Eric Carl and his beautiful, beautiful artwork. So that's um 
that was our, our project for today. I hope you'll go and try this with your, with your children. And uh, again, go to the Eric Carle uh, website too. And I, we'll, we'll see if we can link this for you because his videos are really cool. You can look it up on YouTube and go watch his, uh, how he makes how he makes his art. And again, we do, it's, just, it's just so neat to be able to see an artist at work because there's just not very, there's not that much of that from, from a lot of those earlier illustrators and artists, but he was a very avid documenter. So you can go and see him make all his stuff. And again, you'll be, I think you'll feel really confident when you look at that and go, hey, wait a minute, we can do this. And again, kids can do this. This is how he does it. So it feels really great to be empowered in that way of like, hey, wait a minute, this guy's a professional. I can do this too in my house. I feel really good. Um, can I put a link here? Ooh, are you gonna try? Yeah, see if you can try doing that, Megan. Megan's gonna try putting a link here, so if you guys wanna tr check that out, because I'm, yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to get that to you all. It's really neat. Um, okay, kidartlet.com, yay! So this is the type of projects that we are doing in, at kidartlet, nope. <laughs> you go to kidartlet.com, please, no. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, We'll see if we can link to this somehow. <clears throat> I don't know if we can share it on, I don't know, I'll figure it out. Uh, but this is the type of projects that we are are, try, are advocating for here on KidArtlet, uh, so that you, the, somebody was saying like this is, it's more project based, which um, to me this is open ended. It's it's very much like, yes, we're being inspired by Eric Carle and we're using specific supplies to, to build on these ideas and to um, kind of, figure out how he did things, but because we're using his structure, we get to explore it fully to our own abilities. And so this is also a project that it just is great for the very young and up to, you know, later elementary kids. I mean, I've done this stuff with teenagers. They think this is fun. So, and PS, we adults like this too. So I don't know that this is just one of those ones where you can go and do it with a variety of ages. Amanda, what are you saying? Sorry. This is so great. I truly feel that my struggle with giving my daughter creative control comes from years of product focused art. So thanks for, oh yay, for these amazing ideas. You're welcome. Yeah, I mean, we, this idea is that, right, you're gonna give them the, going to give them the, these materials, let them explore it, and then uh, let them kind of create how they want. You are using a bunch of paint and you know all these different items so it's just kind of figure out how to contain it in your space so that you feel comfortable doing these things and we hope that by doing this this becomes more and more accessible for you guys so again go and check out the kid artlet theme and challenge this week which is um illustrators that inspire go look at your bookshelves see what what books are there uh ezra jack keats is also a great one he has so many so many beautiful books and his artwork's wonderful. And if you are on our email list, and if you're not, you should join. Um, but if you're on our email list, you have access to our resource library. And if you scroll down to the bottom, there's a snow edition and there's a, a process art project in there that is all based on the snowy day by Ezra Jack Keats. So you can check that out too. It's another very open-ended experience. Herf, who, sorry, Megan, Herf Tule, yeah, oh, he's great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you're giving suggestions. Okay. <laughs> I love him. He's so wonderful. Um, yes. So I go ahead and, you know, we'd love to, I, I love getting inspired by all of you all when you, when you tag us with uh, hashtag kid artlet and let us know and sharing the books that are inspiring you and uh, sharing also the, uh, <clears throat> and sharing the, um, the, the, the art that comes from, from all of your inspirations. Megan saying she's all just just another fun approach. To it. Yeah, I love Herve Tule and his ability. His, I think you put we posted that it's his his workshop for kids is really a great book about just innovative creative thinking and kind of thinking, taking these really regular concepts and making them very accessible for for children to explore. And honestly, we we grown ups too. <laughs> I'm always like, oh, that's fun. I'd love to do that. Um, yeah, so I hope you guys will check it out. I hope you'll join us. And you also have, just let me give you a little plug. So if you like all of this, this is what we've got going on in the Kid Artlet box. So, and 
this type of video and, and this type of, of community and support, this is what we're all about. This is what we, we don't, you know, we want you to be able to bring those experiences into your home. And so that you can have, you know, more of that creative bookish time with your kids that's really meaningful and connected and something that you look forward to. And that's just fun. So we have, you have through April 30th to lock in your 10% off your um, lifetime off of your subscription. So that means for however long you decide that Kid Artlet fits in your family, you get 10% off when you, when you sign up with the Founders for Life code. So check that out too if that's something that's interesting and feels like it's resonating really well for you and your family. If it's not right now, totally okay. We get it. So we're going to still be here. We're going to come here every week and still show you different process art activities. Megan's coming later this week. She's going to talk to you about how to curate a, um, a really thoughtful and lovely children's library in your home. And um, she's also got a couple other projects she's going to share with you later in the week. So look for her live. If you're on our email list, we do send out a send out the, the, the information as to when we come on live so that you can plan for it. And let us know if this, these are good times. We've, we've been trying all these different uh, time periods as to when it works. Um, so I hope if you guys have a, a, a certain time, you're like, this is great. We'll do it again at, at those times. Okay. So I want to see what Amanda is saying. You're loving process art even though my stress levels get high. <laughs> Practice makes perfect. <laughs> I understand that. <laughs> if you've noticed, I'm all about containing. Did you notice that? Because I I get it. I don't want paint on my walls either. So I love to visually, visually contain things for children. Uh, being like everything has a place, even though it's kind of a mess right here at the moment. But um, I I really believe that the that you can create order out of the chaos and, and still allow them to to kind of play and, and go with the, the art supplies. And yeah, you're right, practice makes perfect. The more exposure you give them to things like this, the the, the more competent and, and confident they become with it. So it's, it's definitely, you know, it's hard to expect a child who hasn't ever held a giant paintbrush to know what to do with it. We would never expect them to be able to be like, here's a pencil, start writing. <laughs> you know, it's like, they don't know what to do with it. So we have to, we have to show them and and, and let them explore. And a lot of this process is like, let's explore. So if we figure out like, hey, if I put glue on here, I can stick things to it. And of course they're going to be like, what happens if I put glue on this? Should I do that? Right? And a lot of things start to explore. So that's why I'm like, do it with your kids. Help them figure, you know, figure out where those where those those boundaries are so that they can they can just freely explore and develop their creativity. All right, I, I really am glad you guys joined me. I see a whole bunch of you just jumped on. Uh, I will see if I can save this video and put it onto our YouTube channel so that you can have it. I will also be jumping on over to our Facebook page in a minute and doing this again. So if you go to the Kid Artlet Facebook page, you'll be able to see me live there while I'll do all this again. Okay. So again, go check out the Kid Artlet New Challenge theme, Illustrators That Inspire, and show us and tell us who your favorite illustrator is. We cannot wait. I cannot wait. You love this theme. Yay! Uh, let's see. You're saying you loved my video yesterday. Oh, good. Thank you. I kept looking around for containers and setting them up the way you described. Oh, good. <laughs> I could talk to you about containers for probably five hours. <laughs> I think there should be science research about how to contain things for children. <laughs> Does anyone know if that's a real thing? Because um, <laughs> I really could write a dissertation on containers, I think. Um, I won't spare. I, I will spare you for now. But yes, I think containers are really important. And I think they're really important in how we... Pre I think it's important about how we present things to children. Uh, it's, I think it roots back into that. A lot of that's Montessori based education, right? But that Reggio inspired in, in education and, and um, even Waldorf too has a lot of that too, where it's like creating beautiful spaces for, for the children to interact in. And I've, I've always taken that to heart. And I think, you know, that, that it, it means a lot to them as to how it's being served to them. It doesn't mean it has to be fancy. It just means it needs to let them flow and experience it. Okay, so I'm going to cut myself off because I could, again, talk to you about containers for, like, hours. All right, I'm headed to Facebook. Join me over there if you missed the live demonstration. So I will see you there very soon. Okay, thanks, you guys, for joining me. Bye.